Hello and welcome to Bohannon Guitars and Ukuleles. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, putting ramps in the string slots and why uh, you should do it for a variety of reasons. So this is my standard ukulele string through bridge and that hasn't been slotted yet. Um, so what I might do is show you, I'll do one of them and then I'll talk about why I do it. Um, so f what I use is a cordless Dremel with a tiny little ball. bit in the end. I'm not sure what number it is, but you know, it's that size. <laughs> um, so I'll do, I'll just cut one of these and then I'll uh, come back with some pencil and paper and just draw some diagrams and talk about it. I'm trying to get a good angle here. This will get noisy for a second. Actually, I'll put the microphone down. So that's about all you need. Um, I'm going to come back in with a nut file <laughs> and just clean up any roughish edges or, or anything that doesn't kind of transition nicely. Um, and that's that. And that rolls nicely into that hole. So let me get out my trusty pen and paper and talk about it a bit. So, <laughs> trying to find a good place for this camera. So, so there's the bridge side view with the saddle slot. And the saddle coming out. And then for a guitar or a uke, um, or a uke with a string through bridge like this one, or a pin bridge like um, some people do. So here's the hole drilled and then the string goes through there. If this was a guitar, actually with a string through bridge as well, the 
string comes down through here and then you tie a, a knot on the end of it and you know that's a knot and then it goes up through there so the trouble is with just having a hole that's just drilled straight in is this point here is sharp so the first thing I do is countersink this hole so I countersink it a little bit just so it, it makes it look nice as well but then you've still got this point and this point and you want the string to so let's blow this up a little bit so this ang this point here is just another version of this um, and you've got that point and that point and what the string's doing is kind of kinking over there then kinking over there so it's it's like kink kink and what what you prefer what's best is to have the string just rolling out nicely and so when you cut a nice string slot like I just did you are doing exactly that into the wood So now the string can just flow out nicely onto the um, top of the saddle and onward to the nut. Um, and also the nut um, should be shaped accordingly. So the nut starts out like that then you know shape it like that and then the string comes into it and down to the string post and let's say that's the string post um, yeah I'll do another video on nuts but um, this is just for saddle slot why you um, put a string slot into a, s into a bridge um, so this will stop it's a bit like having you know if you're if you're the top of your saddle is like this the string is going to hit here and break really easily uh, and it's the same here so you want want this to, s to flow out nicely um, and also over here you don't want any sharp edges on the or anywhere where the string attaches to or rides over you don't want a sharp edge and it's a the other thing that it does is it gives a better break angle <laughs> um, so what a break angle is um, side view of a bridge and if the neck isn't set correctly or it's just an old guitar or whatever usually guitar um, and it's got a really shallow or not very high saddle and this is the um, string slot string hole or bridge pin hole rather um, that's the string and here there's that's called a break angle so the the string breaks over the saddle down into the bridge pin hole if that is like this that's really bad you're not going to get any downward pressure onto the top and the vibrations you know from the strings aren't going to uh, 
into the top. Um, the best way is of course resetting the neck, but a good way to just gain some brake angle is to do this. And if you use a, it's a bit hard with that Dremel that I was using, but if you use a, a file, um, I'll, I've got one I'll show you. Um, you can, you can kind of do more of a, a deeper slot, just the slot, not the whole hole here. Um, so if you do that with this, instead of having this pathetic break angle, you'll suddenly get, oh, let's do it here, so instead of getting you know, that kind of break, ang break angle, you'll get that break angle, and I usually go for about 45 degrees, something like that, you know, that's what you should aim for. I'll get that little uh, saw that I was talking about one second. So Stuart McDonald sell this, it's probably pretty cheap, but this is the other way to uh, to file in through the bridge pinhole of a guitar. This is too big obviously for that uke that I was just doing. I think they've redone this, this is kind of a bit thin, I think the new ones are a bit better. You could also make one with a hack not a hacksaw file, well you could use a hacksaw file, but a, um, a electric jigsaw and you probably have to grind this a little bit down because this has to fit in the saddle slot, I mean in the bridge pin hole and you just kind of saw slowly until you get to a desired angle and then you just kind of roll it in like this and if you if a guitar comes in with a repair and it doesn't have the slots in I recommend this to the customer and describe everything that I'm describing now I might use better pictures so <laughs> um, and so when you've got the correct brake angle uh, you know about 45 degrees you get the you know an optimum pressure over the saddle which drives the top and gives you all the sound and tone that comes out of a stringed instrument. Uh, if you've got really bad brake angle, like just no brake angle over the saddle, you won't get any sound or tone, like really horrible stuff. Um, so I might do the other three so you can see and uh, I hope you enjoy my pictures. <laughs> sink a redwood top by the way. And I'll drop my microphone so it's not as loud.
dokie, old ton. So this is the one that was filed. Um, so I'll just come in with these. So these were the file and um, make them all a bit nicer. And that's how I do it and why I do it. And I hope that was of interest. <laughs> if you like these luthier tips, then do subscribe to my channel and if you have any uh, questions or anything just let me know um, and if you want me to do a video on something let me know I can try and fit that in what I like on this uke is these purflings how they fade away to nothing first time I've done it. It's cool, I reckon. Okay, thank you very much. Bye, see you next time.